Is it even worth working in Roblox Studio? If you have money, if you have the ability to hire people, why would you spend your time building, scripting, modeling, designing UI, etc.? Why would you do that when you can just hire other people to make games for you? That's the question I'm facing right now. I think that it is a answer of creative expression versus efficiency. And it's up to you, right? As a strategy first dev, you recognize the value of hiring other people. You recognize that it's a form of leverage to hire other devs and that it is a very good thing and it allows you to make games faster. Now, on the other hand, right, there is a certain creative expression that comes from working in Roblox Studio, a certain fulfillment that comes from making builds, that comes from scripting a system, seeing it function that comes from making UI and clicking on the panels and seeing them work in your game. So the question becomes, is the time trade-off of spending hours working worth the efficiency trade-off that would be having someone else do it and not having to spend those hours? And I think it comes down to asking yourself, right, on a task-to-task -task basis, what you wanna do. For me, I've made the decision that for our new game in Jimmy Games that we're working on, I am going to hire a programmer to work on this because I found a very good source to hire a programmer from. We're gonna hire it out. I'm not gonna have just me and my other programmer do all the scripting. I have multiple jobs, I have development, and I have content creation. For me, it doesn't make much sense for me to handle that task. I'm at that position in my Roblox development career where I can hire other devs. You might not be at that point yet, so that puts you at a disadvantage. That's why we talk about building up leverage, earning funds from simple games, commissions, other methods, so you can fund better projects later or so you can pay other devs to help you. If you wanna do exactly what I do and hire devs right, to work on different games, you need to focus on making money. So how can you do that, right? You can, of course, make solo projects, but if you're a dev who only has one skill, like animation or building, and you don't have scripting skills, that's gonna be pretty hard, unless you try using all AI, which doesn't always work to make an entire game if you don't know how the code works and how to fix bugs, etc. So, you might have to do a different monetization method. You can take commissions. Taking commissions is a very popular way to earn money from your Roblox development skills. It's very easy as well to set it up. You go on Twitter, X nowadays, you set up an account, give yourself a nice Roblox theme profile picture or your face if you want, put a portfolio together, right? Get a website like Card, throw images of your work in there, examples, work experience, games you've worked on, etc., And then start promoting yourself, start posting. Say, hey, I'm open for commissions. Make a commission sheet. I have a video I made on that a long time ago. You can go ahead and watch that in the top right-hand corner. You can make your own commission sheet that shows different pricing options and how much it costs to hire you. Once you earn some money now, how much do you actually need to have to fund projects? T say to fund an entire dev team. Let's do a thought experiment. To fund a dev team, a full stack developer team of every dev of every category that you need to finish a project, what do you need? Well, a scripter typically costs several hundred to thousands of dollars to hire because they're doing a lot of intensive work. If you hire somebody for like 800 bucks, that's gonna be around mm, 200, 300,000 Robux. Okay, cool. Now everybody else, let's just say they're gonna be Mm, 10,000 to 100,000. So that means that you're gonna be spending about 400 to 600,000 Robux in total for a simple small project if you're hiring out everybody. That's the equivalent of about 2,100 US dollars. To get there, you're gonna have to do quite a bit of work, right? You can't just be playing small scale if you're trying to fund entire games. It's not just earning like, oh yeah, I'm gonna take a few commissions, I'm gonna earn eh, 3,000 Robux. No, sir. Especially if you're younger, like you're a teen, you're 13 years old, you're gonna think, oh yeah, I can probably pay a full dev team for 5,000 Robux. No, you need much more money than that, my friend. So you're gonna have to get to work, right? You're gonna have to work very hard on one of these methods, or you're gonna have to work very smart. So when you're doing these methods, when you're taking commissions, when you're selling your dev assets, you wanna keep that in mind and price adequately. Price as high as you can for your work, right? And then you might ask, well, Smarty, if I price really high, if I price for 100,000 Robux for a map, nobody's gonna buy, right? 
that's where you're wrong. When you set a high price, if your work is good, like good enough, people will pay because you're saying that you value your work. You're saying, I believe in myself. You're saying my work is worth this amount. So they're gonna pay that price. Some people will if you adequately market what you do, right? But you can use my videos to figure out how to earn the funds needed to pay developer teams. But now another issue comes in, right? How do you find competent developers? Oftentimes we hire devs and they're slow, they're lazy, they don't get anything done. How do you find somebody who actually gets things done in the Roblox marketplace? It's hard, I'll admit it, right? I have a lot of devs who have ghosted or scammed while doing a commission or have just been incredibly slow and totally incompetent. You can avoid this First of all, by checking their background, right? So you wanna look, okay, has this person worked on some credible projects? And the better the dev, the more it's gonna to cost to hire them. If you're trying to get very good devs, you have to keep that in mind, it is gonna cost some money. Now, after that, right, after you find somebody with a good background who has good reviews, you could even talk to some of the people they've worked for before and ask how they did. Once you found that person, you need to give them proper explanations of what they need to do. You need to use a Trello board, map out all the tasks that they need to get done, give them deadlines as well. If you don't give them deadlines, there's no pressure on them to finish the work fast. They're gonna be incredibly slow. Then you need to keep them accountable. So accountability is one of the biggest, if not the biggest thing that devs are missing when they are hiring people. You need to be able to keep your devs accountable. If you see that your dev doesn't hit a deadline, you need to tell them that they did something wrong. Hey, you haven't hit the deadline, you've missed it, that is not okay, we need you to hit these deadlines on time or I'm afraid we're gonna have to let you go. You have one more chance or you have two more chances and if you can't figure it out, we're gonna find somebody else. You can straight up say that. Now what's important is if you are holding your devs accountable, you need a system to do this. You need to have a method to it. So you're gonna have to structure the payment differently. So you'll wanna do weekly payments rather than a payment at the end of the month or a payment at the end of their commission. Do weekly payments. When they get their weekly tasks done, then they get paid. Then give them bonuses as a reward for finishing the work on time. But if they miss deadlines, dock their pay a bit. Then tell them this at the start of the commission. Hey, if you finish the work on time, I'm gonna pay you more. You miss deadlines though, just know we're gonna dock your pay right, on that weekly payment by say 50 bucks, 100 bucks, however much it is. If you do this, it's gonna be a lot easier to keep your devs in check. Now the problem is some devs won't accept this agreement. Don't hire them, hire somebody else. Now, we've talked about the accountability side of things, the system we are implementing with devs to keep them on task and on track to finish the work we hired them for, especially because of how notorious devs are in this community for being lazy, slow, and incompetent. Another tip to make your devs work the way they need to work is to do video calls with them. So the way that you lead your team is also very important. So if you do voice calls on Discord and preferably video calls, you're gonna build a bond. And then when there's a deeper bond, when you guys are talking on voice calls or preferably video calls, as opposed to just text chats, now they're gonna feel more connected to you and like, oh, I need to do work for this guy. I need to stay on track because hey, I know him. He's not just a Discord PFP. He's an actual guy who's hiring me. So that's another tip as well, have calls. I've said this many times in the past. It greatly helps build that connection with your workers. Now finally, hire devs outside of the Roblox marketplace. So because Roblox developers that you try to hire tend to be bad workers, you wanna look outside. You can look outside on different websites, right? Different job hiring sites. One great one is onlinejobs.ph, which lets you hire people who live in the Philippines. And there are people on there who are college educated who you can hire at a lower rate than it would cost to hire somebody from America because they have a lower cost of living. This is something I'm using now to hire devs because if I hire in the Roblox community, eight, nine times out of 10, they're gonna be unreliable. Now, this is my thought process towards hiring people, right? I'm thinking about delegation and the hobbyist mindset keeps people stuck in passion, like just worshiping passion. And thing is, passion has value. I even talked about that. I even said that for myself in the start. 
right? But the strategy first mindset recognizes when we need to put that passion aside. So sometimes I might love building the map, but because it's gonna take me six hours, 20 hours to build the map, I'm better off hiring somebody. Even if it's 70% as good, that is 100% awesome, as Dan Martell would say. He's the author of Buy Back Your Time, which goes deep on this type of stuff. Hiring people is one of the best things you can do as a Roblox dev. Most hobbyists are especially predisposed to be against hiring. They hate it. To be fair, they'll be for hiring sometimes, like for one dev. Oh yeah, you need a GFX? Go ahead and hire. Hire an artist. Support artists. But then the second you say you want to hire people for everything and you don't even want to touch Roblox Studio, you just want 100% leverage, that's where they start to have a problem. Oh, you're not a real developer. You're just hiring people to make games for you. Who made you the gatekeeper of what a real dev is? That's the question. In 2025, what is a real, real dev has completely changed as to what a real dev was in 2011. So in this new marketplace, it is completely feasible. It is completely authentic to hire an entire team of devs and never even touch or very rarely touch Roblox Studio. That positions you as a studio owner, as the boss. And that is the best position to be in as a dev because when you're able to make games with a high leverage system like that, you make games faster. You're able to make games without your time and effort going directly into it. And that way you have a higher chance to be successful in the market. Like if you actually put together a robust team that gets things done because that team is gonna allow you to get out more projects. And what do we always say, right? More shots equals more chances for success. Roblox development being a business isn't just about Roblox games being products, right? That is true. Roblox games are products and art pieces at the same time, but it's not just about that. You see, Roblox development being a business means that there is the distribution side of that, but there's also the production side of that. Distribution, we've talked a lot about on this channel, but the production side also changes when it is a business. Because when you're thinking like a business owner, you think in terms of leverage. You think in terms of using your money to fund teams. And you think of hiring people so you can delegate work, right? Delegate your scripting, building, modeling, UI design, GFX, VFX, animation, all to other people. That positioned you as the CEO of your own Roblox business. And when you're in that spot, right, you have a high leverage system. Now, getting to this position is possible, but it requires you to put different things in place. The way you put these components in place is through Roblox development career strategy, right? Roblox development career strategy allows you to map out your career in such a way that you put yourself in the most optimal position to win. When you're in the most optimal position to win, what does that mean? Right? That means you have used different methods to make money and you have earned enough to where you have the leverage, the capital, right, to fund teams. Now, another component of this is networking. Networking is also important to Roblox development career strategy because if you know the right people, you could team up with somebody, do 50-50 split on the game, right? Have them do half the work, have you do half the work, or you guys both hire people with your funds. Your guy invests 500,000 Robux, you invest 500,000, boom, right? Put that together, you have a million Robux in funds to spend on hiring devs. So if you have that system, right, built through networking, that puts you in a great position as well. So there's many things that devs aren't looking at, right? And what this channel teaches is how to see the bigger picture because Roblox development career strategy is all about thinking ahead and it's all about plotting big moves. It's all about plotting where you're gonna be in six months or a year, right? And making sure that the actions you're taking now lead to you reaching your goals then. Thing is, if you're just taking random action and doing whatever you feel like and spinning your wheels, working on one project all by yourself, you're greatly reducing your chances of success because you're putting everything into one opportunity. That's what making your dream game first is. It is investing everything in one opportunity. It's pushing all your chips and poker into one pile on the first round. That is stupid. That is an idiotic strategy. But the problem is when you take a player, right, a Roblox player wandering around the universe of Roblox who's so used to just playing games and you slot them into the role of a developer, now you're dealing with some problems because the way a player thinks is like they're looking for the maximum fun and enjoyment. What do we talk about? The number one thing Roblox players care about is fun, right? So what is a dev who is a player gonna do? Exactly, 
They're going to seek fun. They're not going to seek profit. They're not going to seek players. They're not going to seek results. They're going to seek enjoyment. And what is the most quick path to enjoyment from their shoes? Making Call of Duty on Roblox. Making the most complex game in the world on day one. That is why we talk about this so much. Because you're slotting a player into a developer's role. They're a hobbyist gone rogue. This is a recipe for disaster. Most devs burn out making their passion projects. This is why. These devs are bad developers. They are not skilled. They do not have a plan. They don't know what they're doing. And that isn't to say that these devs can't improve, but they need better information. That's what this channel is all about. When devs find this channel, they shift out of the hobbyist mindset. If they properly understand this and internalize it, they shift into the strategy first mindset. And that leads to what? Better action. That leads to what? Better results. When you think strategy first, you think, okay, yeah, I'd love to make the next jailbreak. I'd love to make Call of Duty on Roblox, but I can't do that. I can't do that when I'm a brand new person. It's okay. I'm going to make a simple game first. I'm going to make a steal a game, right? Okay, simple enough. I'll make that. Now, this person is going to get results faster. Why? Not because that game, not because making a quote unquote cash grab is going to make them get boosted by the algorithm because Roblox has corporate greed or some something like that, like what hobbyists will tell you. No, it's because this dev is putting out more games. They're putting out more games in the first place. When you make simple games, you take a lot less time to develop them. It takes, what, two weeks instead of four months. So therefore, they naturally end up putting out more projects. And more projects equals more chances one of those lands with players, and then the algorithm picks it up, takes it to success. It's that simple. So... Everything we talk about this channel is the most important information devs can learn anywhere. Because when devs are stuck in this nonsense mindset, right, the hobbyist mindset, they don't get anything done. And even if they do, they don't actually reach people. 99% of the time even, right? So thinking like a businessman, it actually allows more art to reach people. It allows more passion projects to get out there, right? Because when you're making simple games, that doesn't mean you don't put passion into it. It just means that it is controlled passion. It is passion that is directed towards a goal, directed towards a purpose. Passion that is put through the 80-20 rule, right? 20% of your actions lead to 80% of your results. 20% of your efforts lead to 80% of your income or your players. It leads to you cutting the fat, right? Cutting away the nonsense, cutting away the ideas that don't make your game directly get players. That's the strategy first mindset. You can learn more by subscribing right now to SmartyRBX and I will see you next video. Click here to learn even more and unlock all the truth that the hobbyist hive mind will never tell you about Roblox game development. See you next video.